Hi, I'm Chad Johnson. Today I'm doing a comparison between four popular lavalier microphones so that you might get an idea of the character of each mic. Today's shootout will be between the Sennheiser ME2, the Tram TR50, the Sanken COS11D, and the new Rode Lavalier. I'll also be capturing audio today with the Rode NTG3 shotgun so you can get an idea of how these lavaliers cut with a shotgun mic. Now as far as sensitivity goes, each mic came in at a different sensitivity level with the Sanken COS11D being the most sensitive mic, which is great for signal to noise ratio. So you're able to turn your audio levels down, which effectively turns down the noise and gives you a nicer sounding signal. The Rode Lavalier came in second, just a couple dB under the Sanken, with the Tram coming in a close third and the Sennheiser ME2 a distant fourth, about six dB quieter than the rest of the Lavs. Now, each microphone has its own pluses and minuses and holds its own place in the audio kits of various videographers. The Sennheiser ME2 is a decent mic. I used it for years before I upgraded to a higher priced mic, but I had n really no complaints until I got something a lot nicer and could tell the difference. For many applications, I found the ME2 to be a decent mic and uh, covered the bases I needed. The next mic we're gonna be listening to is the Tram TR50. It's a great mic found in lots of audio bags. When it was introduced, the TR50 miniature microphone revolutionized the industry. It was the standard in feature film, television production, and other areas of the entertainment industry because of its size and because of its wide frequency response. I think it has a nice warm tone and lends itself to many applications. Next up is the Sanken COS 11D. I think it's a great mic. It's one of the new generation lavaliers enhanced to meet today's HD audio requirements. It features a new front mesh screen, which is water resistant, which is good for sweat and makeup, uh, which is why it's very popular used in theater and film applications. It's also one of the first to utilize a vertical placement of the diaphragm for a much greater effective area within a very small casing. So this mic's easy to hide. You can hide it in your hair, you can hide it in your hat, hide it in a plant. It's just a great all around mic and I think it's safe to say that it is the most used lav mic today in film and television. Last but not least is the Rode Lavalier. It's the new kit on the block and I'm kind of excited about this microphone because it's got this Micon connector system, which is very versatile. The Micon connector system allows you to just buy a new connector rather than buying a whole new mic wired for say use in a hard wire situation or for a different brand of transmitter or for an eighth inch connection to a portable recorder. For 30 extra dollars, you can buy an XLR connector so you can hardwire it. So that's awesome and it's gonna save you a lot of money in the long run. And coming in at around $250, the mic isn't that expensive comparatively. Okay, let's get into the direct comparisons. Starting off with the Sennheiser ME2. Many people have this in their audio kits. They're used to it, they know how it sounds. So now here's how it sounds against the Tram TR50. Tram TR50 is used by many, many people in the professional markets, and it's a great mic. Now let's go between the ME2 and the Rode NTG3. The Rode MTG3 is a great sounding shotgun in my opinion. Here's the Tram TR50. We're gonna go from the Tram TR50 over to the Sanken COS 11D. The Sanken COS 11D is a great sounding lavalier. Here's the Rode NTG3 shotgun. I hope it sounds better. I'm not monitoring right now, but it should sound a lot better. The Rode Lavalier is the new kit on the block with lots of great connection options and a pretty good sound. Okay, now here's just a lav shootout, no shotgun included. 
Starting off with the Sennheiser ME2, comes with the Sennheiser G2 and G3 units, over to the Tram TR50. Many people use this, it's been in production for years. It's a nice warm sounding mic. And now over to the Sankin COS 11D, which I find to be brighter than the Tram. And now over to the Rode Lavalier, the new kid on the block, great sounding microphone. Going back from the Rode Lavalier to the Sankin COS 11D, to the Tram TR50, Sennheiser ME2, to the Rode Lavalier, Sennheiser ME2, to the Tram TR50, to the Sankin COS 11D. And what's great about these miniature microphones is that you can hide them just about anywhere. Sometimes you don't always have the ability to put them right in the sweet spot in the center of the chest. Uh, maybe they're not wearing a shirt. Maybe the shirt they're wearing would reveal the mic. So you have to get creative and find other places to put them. Like this hat, for instance. With the omnidirectional polar pattern of these microphones, you can pretty much put them anywhere within the vicinity of the speaker's mouth and you're gonna pick up a good signal. Another handy trick are these Rycote undercovers. You put this adhesive tape on your shirt and then you put the microphone on the tape and then you put a little piece of felt that they supply you over the microphone which provides some protection against clothes rustling. That with a little loop in your wire along with taping the wire to your subject's shirt will ensure a more quiet experience. Another way to hide a lab is in plain sight. In this case I've got a pen and I've just taped it to the pen or you can run it through the center of the pen, maybe cut the hole a little bigger at the end, and then run a wire through the pocket, cut a small hole in the pocket, and then you've got it right out in the open. No need for any clothes rustling, hidden in plain sight. Well, this shootout is by no means complete. There's lots of lavaliers out there, but these are four popular ones, and I hope I've given you some idea of the character between each mic so that you might make a better purchasing decision. This is Chad Johnson. Thanks a lot. Happy recording.